Hi all, let's have a look at another intriguing game from a TSAC Season 18 bonus round. It was Stockfish NNUE, which is easily updatable neural network spelt backwards, uh, versus the top four. It turned out that Stockfish NNUE is remarkably solid. And here is one of the more interesting games against Stofflay's uh, 2, version 2. So the opening book given A3. This is actually the Andersons opening uh, after um, Adolf Anderson. He was an unofficial world chess champion and was uh, involved in the Immortal game, which was a game so famous it was even uh, featured in Blade Runner, if you're wondering. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did answer a bit of trivia recently on Cora. So Anderson, um, you know, actually we should cover a lot of more of his games on the channel. So that's another story. So Anderson's opening a legacy here, A3. We have C5 and now C3. So this looks a little bit strange. White's playing drafts here, it seems, uh, weakening the B3 square, D3 square. The, the light squares are, are being compromised a little bit. E6, D4, Knight F6, Knight F3, Knight C6. And here we see actually E3. Uh, so not putting the bishop outside of the pawn chain. Uh, with the addition of A3, maybe this is a little bit more risky than usual. Maybe there's going to be pressure on B2 later with something like Queen B6 at some point. It might be a little bit riskier. But anyway, so Stockfish NNUE here played E3. And this is more like uh, the Collie uh, system. And some, you know, sometimes it's regarded as passive. But quite often, white can play for e4 later. As soon as like e4 is played later, you know, this bishop can sometimes be liberated. And there's even some brilliant games. Even Alexander Anakin has played some brilliant games with the Collie. But this is with the inclusion of a3. So it's a little bit like the Collie, but not quite. We have d5, knight bd2, bishop e7. And in fact, here, use is made of a3 with d takes c5 so a totally different plan to an e4 plan you know with like bishop d3 it's a totally different plan well it has a big threat potentially of clinging on to the pawn here now uh, because if a5 there's bishop b2 and the rook can be you know protected in time there's no big undermining it seems so black has to be very careful about this d takes c5 and plays a5 it turns out here if Bishop takes c5. On brief analysis, it seems we can reach a, a kind of stable symmetrical pawn structure. There shouldn't be too much going on here. It's a very symmetrical pawn structure, at least. Pawns are the soul of chess. It's about equal there. So that seems plausible as well. But we have a5 from Snowflakes. Uh, b3 now is encouraged. So bishop takes c5. Bishop b2, so a slightly different version with a pawn on b3. Still white can play for maybe for c4 later. e5, and we have actually here after e5, b4, and the bishop drops back to d6. If a takes here, then that opens up that bishop, and maybe even b5 there is justified, and white should be uh, doing well there after taking on e5. So uh, bishop d6, and we have b5 anyway, and here we, we get something quite exciting going on. Black actually plays e4. Knight e7 uh, probably leads to a small edge for white. If white has a nice nice perch, nicely perched knight on d4 here. This seems, you know, rather pre uh, pleasant or a bishop substituting there. On knight b8, this, this looks pretty solid actually for black though, in general. Uh, because the c5 square compensates for that perch knight. So black should be okay there. But we see maybe this can be regarded as, as a slightly committal variation e4. We see now b takes, e takes, and now c takes b7. f takes g2. Yes, this is a remarkable chain of exchanges. If bishop takes b7, then maybe white gets a small edge here. White does seem to get a small edge in this position. Uh, or maybe even a clear advantage. So that's in that line with bishop b5 check. Uh, so it's it's avoided here anyway. So we have f takes g2. 
And for a moment, there's four queens on the board. Three queens, four queens. <laughs> you don't usually get four queens that often on a board. Um, they don't last too long, though. <laughs> Queen A4 check, 97 is played. If uh, Bishop D7, then Queen takes D8, and you know Queen takes A5 check. This is giving White uh, a significant advantage. A small edge, at least, and Queen D7 is totally ridiculous because yeah, there's that pin. Yeah, that's a total disaster. So, uh, okay. So after Queen A4 check, Knight D7, limited options, and now this Queen four to C6, hitting D5 and C8, and we see Bishop C7 fending off C8 in particular there. But white takes this pawn here, and now we see queen takes d5. So the queen's unfortunately come off uh, in terms of complexity; it's reduced. If queen takes h2, knight f3, this position uh, is actually rather nice for white. This scenario is rather strong for white. It seems white's going to have an edge there. So queen takes d5. Queen takes white. Sorry, black castles a4. So that opens up the possibility of bishop a3 sometimes. Queen h4 looking at f2. And now actually queen c4 trying to repulse this, this queen away from looking at f2. And, but offering h2, if white had castled queenside, this is actually rather good because it's undermining e3. So on knight c4, I mean, this is quite good. Knight e5. Uh, there's nice tact. This is a nice tactical shot, trying to weaken e3. For example, here, take on e3, and that's doing really well. So there are some issues uh, there with castling, giving up f2. So um, we see queen c4 for the moment, with the king cl clinging on to f2 for a moment. Queen d8. If queen takes h2 here, then the tempo gainer, knight f3 might actually be good after bishop a3 yeah the counter attack on the knight against you know because there was an attack on a bishop but this ends up just being good for white and the exchange up there if we look at this again after knight f3 if queen d6 more sensible then it just runs into bishop a3 so losing the exchange again so okay black needs to be treading carefully so queen d8 Holding that bishop, we have bishop a3 now. Rookie eight, queen d5 is played here. If castling here, it seems black might be doing okay with knight e5. After queen d4, bishop g4, it seems white's position is a little bit creaking here. Uh, for example, if rookie won queen h4, and yeah, it's starting to creak uh, here. For example, rook d8 and queen takes f2. It's it's not that pleasant, and in fact, just 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 to sort of show an even worse scenario uh, here on in this position, if if e4, just just to put this on the board, you know, rook d8. You can see actually the black pieces getting really good after knight g6 for bishop f4, with the king on c1. You know, sometimes it's a tactical target on this diagonal, and you know that's skewering. You know these these pieces, so yeah, White has to tread carefully as well. So Queen D five keeps that kind of pin there. Uh, we have Rook E five, Queen D four, Bishop B seven, Bishop C four, and now Rook F five, and White castles Queen side here. So yeah, White is technically a pawn up. We have uh, Bishop B six. If Black tries to take this pawn. Bishop b5, and if knight f6, the snag here is off the queen takes, bishop takes. Can you see what white plays? This is a tactical target. What does white play, you think, in this position? If I give you 10 seconds to pause the video, white to play here. It's, it's a poison pawn, basically, that f2 pawn, because, yeah, knight e4, it just opens up that rook against d8 and hits there. So this is just, uh, you know, winning for white. 
So yeah, black. Um, you know, if, if rook c two actually best is king b one. If here's c four, and this is just winning a piece, clearly that's actually the technically best continuation. Um, but anyway, so bishop b six was played, not taking on f two. Queen d three. G six now. Uh, yeah, there are, there are still possibilities of, of knight e4 being being handy. Uh, we we have knight b3, uh, all that pin generally. Yeah, it's it's a bit dangerous it seems. So knight b3, bishop c6 protecting d7, bishop b5 putting more pressure again on that d file in effect. Uh, queen c8, and now we have yeah an interesting continuation. So bishop takes, queen takes, queen takes d7. Not minding about queen takes c free check. Uh, if f4 had been played instead of taking on d7, let's have a look at f4 for a moment. Black, it seems, just plays knight f6. And here, for example, this is going to be just even. Uh, Black's got good control over that e4 square, it seems. Sometimes looking at e3. I don't think this diagonal is dangerous enough. It seems equal anyway. So queen takes d7, allowing this check, king b1, queen takes, bishop b2. So there's big dangers here on this diagonal against the black king. We see bishop c5. So just to put something on the board, rook takes his, that's checkmate. You can see the bishops covering the escape squares. So bishop c5 to allow bishop f8. Check, bishop f8. Now rook d8. Queen b4 protecting f8. Rook b8 trying to kick the queen away from there. Queen c5 clinging on to the bishop. Queen c8 just trying to keep a pin for bishop a3 later. Queen e7. Yeah, because if queen takes c8, bishop, sorry, rook takes, there's bishop a3 on the cards. And in fact, here, you know, actually, what does, what does black actually do about bishop a3? There's, there's nothing to do. It just, it just wins the bishop on f8. So queen e7. We see here Queen C three threatening Queen G seven as well as Queen H eight mate. Check check. If Queen takes A four had been played, then Queen A three is strong looking at that F eight bishop. So here it's just again it white wins that piece and consolidates the piece up. So Queen H one check. Bishop c1, rook e5. Now this is trying to lure the queen away from c1 to get a perpetual check. f3 is played. Just to put it on the board, if queen takes e5, then it's a kind of it's a perpetual check scenario. And if queen c8 instead, then can you see what black plays here? If I give you five seconds to pause the video to to to, to maintain equality, black to play here. What would you play with black? Okay, rook e8, just to, you know, trying to deflect the queen away from c1. And here again, it's it's a draw because there's these checks like on d5. Uh, so it's a perpetual check draw. There's no escape from the checks. So that's interesting. So anyway, f3 was played. And we have queen d1, king b1, rook e6. If queen takes f3... Then just queen takes e5 is fine. <laughs> Let's take that. So uh, rook e6, e4, h5, queen c8, queen d6, <coughs> king a2. We have queen takes h2, bishop b2, queen d6, queen c3. So again, renewing threats of queen g7, queen h8, f6. So here things are getting really interesting now. There's this new pin here. So in fact, white is the one, a pawn down here, but with the dynamic kind of double pins, double absolute pin situation. And if white gets another move or two, also f4, f5 is pretty strong here. We have, you know, queen a6 being played. So if king f7, then f4 with the big threat of f5. Uh, so for example, here is actually really good for white after rook b5. Check. We can see that white's like smashing through. 
Uh, that's horrible for the king's safety. So queen a6. And white takes this pinned pawn. Bishop takes f6. King f7. So restoring uh, for the moment three pawns each. Bishop d4. But white's pieces are clearly better. Black's pinned up here a bit. Bishop b4. Rook b6. Queen c8. f4 now. Yeah, big threat of f5. King e7. And white plays a really interesting tactical shot here. It's it's quite crushing. Can you spot what white plays? If I give you 10 seconds to pause the video, what does white play here? Okay. Bishop c5 check, believe it or not. It creates that kind of battery which creates a killer comp might call a killer common square on b7. Once you've got a battery, you've got access to you know killer common squares on the battery. Uh, so bishop takes his play because if queen takes then that neglects e6. That's that's fatal. It's gonna be mating. So uh Bishop takes his plays and now check and this is winning for white. If k k King f8 is is played, but if you know King f6, can you see what white plays here? Okay, just just check. Actually, I'm not going to give you too long for that. And it's just winning on the diagonal. Uh, if King d6, then there's immediate immediate Queen d5 checkmate. So King f8 was chosen. And that you know loses the queen rook b8. So yeah, White's calculated this well to win the queen. And yeah, it, it is just a big. It, it's a big enough material advantage. The, the rook and bishop are really no match here. And after winning this pawn, then there's an outside pass pawn. Black's resources are going to be stretched too much. It was resigned here actually. Uh, so yeah, uh, Stockfish and then UE was able to win with Anderson's. Opening so the tribute to uh, the legacy of uh, Adolf Anderson, not not very popular first name at the moment. <laughs> so anyway, Adolf Anderson, yeah. Um, I I believe that's the one. Yeah, that is the legacy too. So he was like an unofficial world champion. So it managed to win with a three, turning into a kind of souped up collie system. Where a3 was actually shown to have an advantage sometimes in the d takes c5 variation, as shown. So a fascinating encounter. Not too many decisive games overall. In fact, I think only four decisive games. In this particular event, there was the longest ever like recorded draw streak, apparently, in T set history. Uh, so NNUE versus the top four, it only lost one game, in fact, to Alistair, which I might show you at some point. But it had three wins. Uh, um, was it four wins? Uh, three or four wins. Check that out on the cross table. Anyway, I, I suggest going to the uh, archive section. It's a, it's a wonderfully easy you know navigational system. There, go to the archive section to set eighteen, and it's, um, so NNUE versus the top four event. Well worth checking out. And the cups uh, coming soon now. The TSET Cup. So that will be interesting to check out as well. But uh, I will be going back to the super final games uh, as well uh, for TSEC 18. It's quite, there were quite a lot of decisive games there, there to cover. If you want to challenge me for a game, kingscrusher.tv or bit.ly slash chessbold. If you register at chessbold, I'll be able to invite you for a game there. Uh, the playlists bit.ly slash Leela chess, bit.ly slash stockfish chess. There's also a suave chat discord, kingscrusher.tv slash discord. Okay, comments, questions, like, share, subscribe with the notification bell, especially. Really appreciated. Thanks very much.